I am back. Happy New Year. I hope everybody had a Merry Christmas. This is the start of year number three for me. Three years I've been doing this, so um, I want to thank all my listeners. And uh, I thought this... I thought this show would be not very eventful, but it has been. Lots of things have happened, so we're going to get into those. Let's see. The Ottawa County Board of Commissioners has fulfilled many of their campaign promises within the first day of taking office. They have been called everything from fascists to untransparent to unlawful. We'll uh, look at what they did and how legal it is. The AG for the state of Michigan thinks that she can find some problems with the actions of the board and is launching an investigation to protect all the unelected Democrats in our county government from our elected board of commissioners. This obviously shows her commitment to democracy and self-governance. We also discuss some of the important arguments, sorry, not important, impotent, for how important the health department is, the health director. And finally, I think I'm just about the only media outlet to report on the exposure of Doug Van Essen as a man more dedicated to some confusion than to working with the new commissioners in an honest way. Why are media outlets so unconcerned with government officials lying to their new bosses. We'll discuss all that today, right here on Dogs Blood Gas. All right. Uh oh. Where did my video display go? Weird. Let me uh let me give this another shot. See if I can uh, get some video up here. I know my uh, face is probably not the most desirable thing to be seen, but just so you know, I'm not just some faceless bot. Um, I'm gonna keep it up. All right. So. Here we go, starting with the Board of Commissioners and what they did. So, I think we can just start with, oh my goodness, my internet's running real slow. That is unfortunate. So, we're going to start here with the Ottawa County Board members and the Attorney General. So, the Ottawa County Board has made a few decisions. Uh, They've gotten rid of their health director. They've gotten rid of their county uh, administrator. They got rid of their legal counsel. They changed the motto to the county. They disbanded the DEI office. They did all this in their first day in office. Too much applause from the audience. That place was packed, right? Like, super packed. Um, Not like a super packed political action committee, but yeah, super packed. There was a ton of people there. There was three rooms that they were using. Probably at least 100 people were there, if not more. Um. So a lot of people in Ottawa County were very interested in what the board of commissioners was doing. And a lot of them were very appreciative of what they were doing. There was a time of public comment, of course, at the beginning uh, in which the county commissioners were called everything from cowards to fascists. Um, I think we know who, who 
uh, was using the word fascist. Um, so we'll actually take a look at his article in which he uh, he has some things to say about our county commissioners. But first, we're going to take a look at News Channel 3. Um, News, News Channel 3 was there. I saw their reporters uh, at the first meeting. So we're just going to talk about a little bit of what they had to say. So the Michigan Attorney General's office is reviewing the actions of the Ottawa County Board of Commissioners after they made several changes, including appointing a new administrator, public health director, and eliminating the county's diversity, equity, and inclusion department. So that gets into a little bit of what we're going to be talking about in a minute with the Attorney General uh, making some uh, decisions to go after our Board of Commissioners. So, the Department of the Attorney General is conducting an extensive review into the actions of the Ottawa County Commission's January 3rd board meeting and will make our findings public upon completion, a spokesperson said. So, they go on to talk about the Open Meetings Act, which uh, none of the commissioners were subject to until they were sworn in. So, that's not really something that they're going to have a leg to stand on. But they're going to try. Now, uh, Mr. Roger Bergman from Grand Haven, he said uh, this is not normal. In fact, it's very unusual. Well, Mr. Bergman, I think that the Board of Commissioners changed hands because they don't like what normal was. So it seems to me that um, the fact that it's very unusual is not necessarily a bad thing. I know he didn't like a lot of what was going on. He was voting no on just about everything. Um, He said, my reaction was that I was in shock because I, of course, had no idea. We did not suspect at all that they wouldn't be willing to at least give Mr. Shea an opportunity to work with them. Um, Now, I haven't gotten comment from any of the commissioners about why exactly Mr. Shea was released. Um, But the the applause from the crowd was quite something. Now, Mr. John Gibbs was installed as county administrator in place of Mr. Shea. And uh, Mr. Doug Zylstra, he uh, adds to this, these comments. He says, uh, some initial trust may have been tested. Um, he, Bergman says this was pre-plan. This was orchestrated. These folks all had pre-position motions that they were bringing up. And then, of course, Chairman, Chairperson Joe Moss and Vice Chairman Sylvia Rohde, uh, Word did not reply to requests for comment. Word did not reply. That's what it says. I'm just reading the article. So uh, they did not reply, of course, as of Thursday. Uh, I don't No, like they could have gone up and asked them for comment. I think they were there. So uh, no, no comment from chairperson Joe Moss or Sylvia Rohde. I do have comment from at least Sylvia Rohde. We'll be looking at that. So these are all of the things that uh, the, the Democrat AG office is very, very concerned about. I don't think many of the people there who are all Ottawa County residents were very concerned about how this meeting went. As I said, the uh, general applause for just about every motion that passed was uh, just about deafening. Um, There were hoots and hollers and cheers. So it seems that many people were happy. Now, I want to get into some of the legal aspects of this because Mr. Doug Zylstra brought up one legal aspect of this that we're going to take a look at. He says that we cannot get rid of our county health uh, director. Now, he says this because... uh, 
MCL. So here's here's a statement. I'm just going to bring the statement right up on screen for you. <clears throat> he says state law MCL 40. I'm just going to correct this because this is wrong here. Uh, 46.11 N is very clear on our powers regarding removal of health officer. We cannot remove our current officer absent serious malfeasance, which no one has alleged. So that's Mr. Dials. Zylstra's opinion on it. Now, what does the law actually say? He actually links it in here where he uh, fixes the typo. So we're going to go to the law. We're going to talk a little bit about what it says. So here it is, uh, 4611, section N. It says, subject to the subdivision, O, remove an officer or agent appointed by the board if, in the board's opinion, the officer or agent is incompetent to execute properly the duties of the office, or if, on charges and evidence, the board is satisfied that the officer or agent is guilty of official misconduct. I think we're going to stop there. You can read the whole thing yourself. So it's kind of an or uh, statement. I say kind of, um, somewhat sarcastically, it is an or statement. It says, remove an officer or agent appointed by the board if this or this. The first part does not need any evidence, does not need a trial, does not need any type of hearing. It just says, in the board's opinion, the officer or agent is incompetent to execute properly the duties of the office. I think there is a case to be made that our county health director is somewhat incompetent to execute the properly the duties of the office. And I'm sure that all of the newly elected board members will say so mostly because that was one of their huge campaign promises. That was one of the things they were running on. So uh, I'm not sure what Mr. Zylstra is talking about. I actually asked him uh, here about this. Um, I had a, had a few minutes of conversation with him. He was gracious enough to actually, he, he gives out his phone number um, to, you know, talk with the press and talk with uh, different Especially the press, I think he wants to make himself available to. So, uh, give me just one second. I'll pull that up. There it is. Oh, shoot. I got rid of my... Hello? Yeah, this is Doug Dowster. Yeah. Um, the Michigan Law 4611... Uh, section N that you cited on Twitter. Um, so you said that um, a county officer cannot be fired unless there is uh, gross misconduct. Is that... Well, let, let's take a step back. I mean, I'm not a lawyer. I'm a commissioner. Uh-huh. And so, and so I have to take, you know, my votes and my actions on you know, how I see state laws affecting our actions, right? Okay. So I would kind of preface that is that, you know, this is how I interpret it because I, as a commissioner, I have to take votes and take action. So uh, that's what I take my, my, my votes in the basis of, right? So okay. uh, I am not, I'm not state Supreme Court justice or anything like that. So, but when I read it as a commissioner, it's pretty clear to me, at least as a commissioner, that there are certain, um, you know, certain of evidence that we need to meet, um, and there's a process that needs to take place before we can remove a health director. Uh, <clears throat> so there's his answer. It was kind of hard to get a straight yes or no answer out of him. I, I kind of went back to the question a couple times because I was I was focusing in on that one thing. He he said very often that he's not a a uh, uh, lawyer or a, a judge, but I don't know. I, I'll let my listeners decide. Do you have to be a lawyer or a judge to uh, simply read the words? I don't think so. And from what I can tell, the words are pretty plain. If in the opinion of the board, the director is incompetent to perform the duties, they can release her. There's nothing about evidence in that clause. There's nothing about you know needing um, anything except the board's opinion. So it's 
I don't. So it just seems uh, disingenuous to me that he can read that and say there has to be evidence, and the other board members are doing something wrong. So that's one aspect of the law that they're going to be looking at. Another aspect is going to be the uh, open. Let's see, what did they 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 mentioned it in this article here. The Open Meetings Act. So that's the one that uh, Dana Nessel is really going after. Now, the Open Meetings Act, I've talked with uh, the representative from Common Legal Group, Mr. Jack Jordan, and he said that the Open Meetings Act is very clear that it only applies to officials that are both elected and serving. So that one's kind of going to fall flat on its face. Um, even if there was some collusion by the new board members before their meeting, they're not subject to that particular law. They can meet with whoever they want. They can talk with whoever they want. They're not, they don't have to, publicly announce all their meetings before they take office. So that seems like it's going to go nowhere. And so we get to some of the other accusations made. One of them is fascism. We've seen this guy before, Mr. Walter Mac Davis. He says, uh, finally, fascist fascism comes to Ottawa County. Now, I know this is going to be a new argument. You haven't heard this one before, but uh, I, I found this article to be somewhat interesting just because he makes a revelation here that the community is not on his side. The community as a whole is not supporting him whatsoever. I don't know where his support is coming from. I've seen some people from California um, in some of the comments of his uh, of his writings. So in California, they they support him. Um, in I think I saw one from Ohio. In Ohio, they support him. Not really in Michigan. And here's here's how I know that he says uh, he says I originally tried through contacts with Republican and Democrat leaders and parties to create a group that would speak as a united series following upon one another in three minute segments that would spell out in detail all the ways in which Ottawa Impact is a fascist organization. 30 to 60 minutes of disciplined presentations. I could not get anyone to join me in this. So, so, uh, the, the community isn't on board, really, with this, and I think that's a good thing. Because we have far too often just accusations of fascism and white supremacy and no real evidence. And, of course, Mr. Walter Davis doesn't give us any evidence of fascism. Fascism being political violence in order to advance a political goal. That's the def def definition that the dictionary gives us. Mr. Walter doesn't really do that. So there goes that argument. And what's really interesting to me is that although uh, WZ, or uh, what's it, uh, News Channel 3, I think they're an ABC affiliate, News Channel 3 was there. Um, not sure if anybody else was there, but the Holland Sentinel uh, wrote a piece on it. I'm sure they were there. Mitchell Boatman from the Holland Sentinel was there. And yes, this is going to be all about just this one meeting because so much happened. And there's so much controversy sur surrounding it. Um, so they say that the crux of Ottawa Impact's goal in supporting candidates for office last year was bringing increased transparency to the Ottawa County Board of Commissioners. But the organization's electees, who now hold a majority on the Ottawa County Board, have thus far 
selected their board chair before being sworn in, added agenda items without warning during Tuesday's original organizational meetings, changed board rules at the last minute to clear the path for their agenda, and even blindsided members of their own group, leaving that transparency far from realized. Now, again, nothing that they did was untransparent. Most of these things were in their campaign promises. They changed agenda items without warning, except their entire campaign. They said, the first day, we're going to do this. So I wasn't really surprised. None of the people in the audience were very surprised. I think the only people that were surprised were the Holland Sentinel. Uh, even even Walter Davis was sure of what they were going to do because they've listened to the campaign promises. He actually elaborated a little bit on what they were planning on doing. So Walter Davis was more informed, I think, than the Holland Sentinel on what they were going to do if this if this uh, paragraph that they wrote is uh, really how they feel about it. So you can go through this article. And of course, I have the, the link up in the description. Um, they talk about some of the things that they did, the firing of Administrator John Shea and replacing him with former GOP candidate John Gibbs uh, without conducting a public interview. So eliminating the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Office, choosing a new health director, and uh, replacing the, counts, the county's council and changing the county's vision statement. So they mentioned all those. You can go through the article, and they don't really expound on why they did any of those things. It's unfortunate that uh, they, they don't really talk about any of this. They do talk about Rebecca Curran being blindsided by some of the things that the rest of the commissioners did. She was also an Ottawa Impact candidate. And I'll even admit that I don't necessarily like that. It's not the greatest thing. You know, Joe Moss ran with Rebecca Curran. Um, and it seems like he kind of evaded one of her questions about whether or not they were going to get rid of the county administrator. So... They do mention that, of course, because that uh, that reflects poorly on the new uh, the new commissioners. Words are hard. So they they go into diversity, equity, inclusion. They go through. Um, they talk about the contract that many city commissioners signed with Ottawa Impact. Um, they talk about, man, a, a lot of things, except the, so they have, they actually have, a okay, so they actually have in here that the contract exists or that it existed. What they don't have is a an explanation of what happened in the back and forth. You can go through. You can read this. In fact, let's read it together. We'll see. After an hours-long discussion stemming from a December email, commissioners voted to replace, replace Doug Van Essen as the county's corporation council. Common Legal Group will take over the role on or before February 28th, working with Van Essen to transfer the, transition the position. The move came after about a dozen amendments, amendments to amendments, and failed amendment attempts to adjust the initial resolution. That was kind of funny being there. Uh, we're going to amend the amendment to the amendment to the amendment. I think there was actually like a series of like four amendments in a row that they were voting on to the original proposal. I digress and we continue. Much of the discussion centered around whether or not there was a contract for services of corporation Council with Van Essen's former law firm, Silver and Van Essen, that needed to be terminated. Terminating the contract was part of the initial motion made by the board. Uh, Moss and Rohde cited a 2017 contract with the firm, but Van Essen said the firm no longer existed and he became a county, county employee on January 1st. He said becoming a county employee had been planned since 2017, but the delay was due to a number of factors, including the pandemic. Van Essen was planning to decide to retire in the near future, 
but had intended to stay on as corporate counsel until a replacement was found. He sent an email to the incoming Ottawa Impact Commissioners in late December communicating his intention, Commissioners said. Gretchen Cosby said that the email spurred the move to hire new counsel and used that email as the basis for accepting Van Essen's resignation. So it keeps it keeps going here. Oh, just a couple more uh, paragraphs about uh, you know the expense of doing all this stuff, but nowhere do they mention that uh, Mr. Van Essen said that he didn't think that Ottawa Impact or the Ottawa Impact candidates were able to form a contract with a law firm, even though there was a contract with his law firm. So they went back and forth for a little while. Doug Van Essen saying, no, there wasn't a contract with a law firm. I didn't have a contract with a law firm. Until finally, we get to this clip. Um, I think I think what happened was uh, Mr. Moss was kind of giving him the rope and letting him do his thing, wrapping it around his neck and, you know, take the plunge. So... Oops, it's not on. Uh, it's not on there. Here, it's on Facebook. So here's where all of the conversation. Employee about of Ottawa County. But there was, in fact, a contractual relationship no. between a law firm These related to you, the services that you provided no. to Ottawa County. No. Could I ask a clear no. question, clarifying question? There, have you read or? seen a contract between Silver and Vanessa and PC and the County of Ottawa? I believe I have. And let's assume for a moment that you have. I know I have. <laughs> um, I'm wondering who signed that contract on behalf of Silver and Vanessa. Was it the president at the time in 2017? I don't, re I don't recall. Okay, I do. <laughs> It was the president of Silver and Van Essen. At least that's what it's listed on the contract. And who is that? Doug Van Essen. Employee of Ottawa County. So um, you can hear him saying, no, no, there wasn't a contract. There wasn't a contract between Silver and Van Essen. There was no contract. And then Joe Moss and Sylvia Rohde, obviously they they talked about this beforehand. They were prepared for Doug Van Essen to deny that there was a contract. It, it's it's weird how prepared the commissioners were for everything that happened. They had an answer for everything because I don't think they knew that Doug Van Essen was going to say, you can't make a contract with a Kalman and group um, or the Kalman legal group, but they were prepared for it anyway. And he did in fact say that they couldn't do it. And uh, they had a contract from Doug Van Essen all ready to go. They knew where it was. They knew how to answer him. So I just, uh, I think that was, that was really well planned of the commissioners. They did a great job just maneuvering all the different legal issues that are coming up. They have one more that I'm not sure is where it's going to go. I asked uh, Miss Sylvia Rohde about how, uh, they are going to justify getting rid of um, the health director. And she sent me this transcript of a court case in which the judge, you know, all the way to the bottom, So the judge made an offhand comment, it seems. He says, uh, now, can a local health officer abuse his or her authority? Absolutely. What can be done? The county board hired him. The county board can fire them and change the law. So this is kind of an argument for, uh, or this is uh, what Sylvia Rohde presented to me as an argument for getting rid of the health director. I'm not sure exactly how far that's going to go in a court of law, but I think they're definitely well within their rights to do what they did. So we come to the end of this confusing jumble of uh, 
uh, proposals and amendments and uh, things, laws that are being cited here. And I think the one thing that we can take away from this is that the new county commissioners are going to be prepared to fulfill their campaign promises, even if Dana Nessel is going to come after them. Um, I think they're more than prepared for backing themselves up. So there's some concerning things. You know, you want the the new directors to, or you want the new commissioners to all be working together. Uh, but I think they, they're more than willing to fulfill their campaign promises. And it seems they're willing to even, you know, talk to the, the press that doesn't, doesn't have anything against them. So if you want more about my take on that, I've got a link in the description to uh, exactly what happened with um, Doug Van Essen and Commissioner Joe Moss. You can go check that out. I'm also going to be coming out with a, uh, a, an article talking about what Mr. Zylster was talking about. So with that, we come to the end of our show. I think what goes on with the County Board of Commissioners is going to be just as interesting over the next few weeks as this week was. So until we get to all of that fun stuff, I mean, I'm Don. This is the Holmes Politicast. Remember to like the video, share it with a friend. Um, let's get the news out in Ottawa County about what is really going on with our county board, because I don't think that we can rely on the press to accurately cover all the information that you want to know. So y'all have a great week and I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.